How much do data analysts make in 2024? The answer, a lot, sometimes. A more realistic answer is you can make a lot. As the demand for data analyst jobs have increased over the years, so have data analyst salaries. And this isn't just due to inflation. I'm someone who transitioned into the field from a non-technical background, and honestly, salary was a big draw for me. I was a teacher, then I was in operations for a few years, but I wanted a career that had a higher earning potential. Today, we're gonna talk about data analyst salaries. Stick around until the end of the video to see which data roles pay the most. So what is the average salary for a data analyst? I looked at a few different sources and the average of all the averages was 87K with ranges as low as 34K, which is honestly kind of crazy, to ranges as high as 137K. In my first data role as a business analyst, I was making a total of 80K. This included a 75K salary with a 7% bonus. This was more than I was making as a business operations supervisor putting in 50 plus hour weeks. I won't say what I'm making now since I'm still an employee there, but it is a good step up from that. Now, there are a few factors that influence salary. The first is obviously experience. Experience is going to affect salary in any role in any industry, but how much does it affect salary in data? I said in the beginning of the video that earning potential was a big draw for me, and data has a relatively high ceiling compared to many other careers. Within the data field, as your technical ability grows, so does your earning potential. According to Glassdoor, the average salary for a senior data analyst is 109K. And realistically, you could become a senior data analyst in three to five years or even less. I actually have a friend whose first data job was a senior BI analyst role. He was only making 95K, but he went from being a teacher to going straight into a senior analyst role. That's pretty amazing. And it's a great example of the earning potential in data. When I was a teacher, I was making 34K. And when I became a dean of students, I was still only making 42K. Now that's in Arizona, which is the 48th worst state for education, last time I checked. But you get the point. Teachers don't make a lot. People in data do. It's just an unfortunate truth. There are also analytics manager roles, which typically pay around the 126K range. These can be a bit less technical since you're less in the weeds, but it certainly depends on what you're doing and what resources you and your team have access to. Beyond the senior and manager levels, there's data science, data engineering, and data strategy roles. These roles are often much more technical than analyst roles, so they typically pay more. I'll discuss these roles in greater depth later in the video. But in Another huge factor is industry. Industry makes a difference because some companies will pay more than the same role in another company. For example, a data analyst at Google makes more than a data analyst at most other places. This is because the tech industry typically pays more in general. Companies like Netflix, Airbnb, and Amazon are highly competitive and are often much more technically challenging, driving salaries higher and competition higher for these roles. Another highly competitive industry that's right up there with tech is actually the finance industry. You may not hear about it as much as you do in tech, but finance companies have some of the highest paying data jobs in the market. Tech is still on top, like I mentioned, but finance is right up there with them. Even though many data jobs these days are fully remote, the majority are still hybrid or fully in office. I couldn't find any resources that compared the percentage of uh, remote jobs to hybrid roles for data specifically, but for the overall market, only 16% of jobs are fully remote in 2024. Because of this, location does play a factor in overall Overall compensation. Surprisingly, multiple sources that I looked at actually confirmed that Australia has the highest average for data analyst roles in the world. However, the cost of living in Australia is a bit higher than in the US at the time of this video. Another big difference is the US has some of the highest paying cities in the world, even if the overall average is lower for the country. Cities like San Francisco, New York, and Seattle have some of the highest paying data jobs in the world. This is because these cities have some of the biggest tech companies companies in the world, like Amazon, Twitter, and Google. And as we mentioned earlier, these companies typically pay more than all other companies in this space. Okay, so let's talk about which data roles pay the most. One thing I love about the data career path is how much upward mobility there is. Again, as I mentioned, this is another big draw for me to break into the field. In many cases, data analyst jobs can actually act as stepping stones for more technical and higher paying jobs, if that's something you're interested in. This is because entry-level 
level of data analysts and business analyst jobs are more on the end user side of the data. You may sometimes have to clean and model data, but oftentimes you're taking data that's already been ingested into the database, querying it and visualizing it to create insight. The deeper you go into the formation of the data, the more technical the work becomes and the more compensation you'll receive. A layer beneath data analysts are data scientists. These roles often work in tandem with data analysts, but because they're leveraging statistics, A-B testing, and machine learning, their roles are more technical and therefore higher paying. And if we go another layer deeper, we find data engineers, which are some of the highest paying data jobs in the market. Data engineers are the ones designing, maintaining, and optimizing data infrastructures. In many ways, they're the lifeblood of a company's entire data foundation. Content creators from fan companies have literally gone viral by disclosing their salaries as data engineers. Based on my research, the average salary for data engineering roles is about 96K. But as we know from the individuals I mentioned, this can be much, much higher, even earning multiple six figures. The same is also sometimes true for data scientists. If we peel back another layer beneath data engineers, we find data architect roles. Data architects examine the data infrastructure of an organization. They plan future databases and implement solutions to manage and store data for the organization. This role requires a wide knowledge of data solutions and how to implement them. Highly technical and highly strategic. Beyond data architects are the data strategists of an organization, but they may not always have this title. They can be directors or CTOs. These are senior professionals who understand how data can drive value for an organization and are directly involved in its implementation. A final note, this technical progression that I mentioned doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be paid more due to the many factors we've described throughout the video. Again, as we've discussed, we know that a data engineer at Airbnb can make more than the CTO of an entire company. So it really all just depends on everything we've talked about. But speaking in generalities, often the closer you get to the data ingestion and data strategy, the higher the pay. Hope this was a helpful breakdown. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe as it goes a long way to helping the channel. I'm also going to link a video where I give some of my thoughts on data boot camps and whether or not I think they're worth it. Definitely check that out if you're interested and I'll see you in the next video.